Good morning and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining ISSO's webinar for the fall update for undergraduate students today. Now I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Estelle, Vice Provost and Office Director of ISSO to give his remarks. Greetings from New York City. I'm Dr. David Ostell, and I'm the Associate Provost and Director of the International Students and Scholars Office at Columbia University. I'm delighted to welcome you to today's webinar. Each one of you, along with your advisors in the ISSO and the faculty and staff of your schools, are engaged in a most important endeavor. I speak of international education at its most profound, an opportunity for the peoples of the world to gather in safety and mutual pursuit of intellectual goals and personal growth at Columbia. As an academic community, we are all taking part in the ancient itineracy of higher education, the movement around the planet of international students, you, who will be our future hope the future leaders of the world. What could be more important and reassuring in our difficult times? Please accept my very best wishes and kind disregards, and I hope the following information will be of assistance. Thank you again, and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, David. Good morning and welcome. Um, so before we begin, uh, we would like to meet our panel for today. Uh, so Maria. Thank you, Sam. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. It is truly a pleasure for me to be here with you as well. My name is Maria Reynoso, and I'm Senior Associate Director for Compliance. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Soled. I am an Associate Director of the International Students and Scholars Office, and I'm very happy to be here with you today. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. I hope you find the information uh, useful. I'm Claire Raybach, and I'm a Senior Compliance Advisor at the ISSO. Thank you. I'm Samantha, I mentioned earlier, I'm the Associate Director for International Student uh, Advising Team. Um, before we begin, we would like to just get a sense of who are you out, out there and by taking a poll. So we're going to ask you to respond to only three questions. Um, I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna give a couple of minutes for you to respond to the poll. All right, excellent. Looks like we have my name students from CC and C's, uh, some GS, quite evenly spread out. Great. Um, so today we are going to um, talk about a number of topics. So we hope to address all your questions um, be before the webinar ends. And uh, we're now going to um, go over just some brief comments about the session today. Um, today, we're going to talk about the updates as many of you uh, heard from the email or seen the email that was sent out. Uh, and then we would briefly mention about uh, continued students and uh, what's to happen. And then most time we will be spent on updating the incoming students uh, in terms of all the different topics. Following by that, we will go to live Q&A. So if you have questions, you can put in your uh, chat and uh, we will address them at the end of the session. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it over to Maria. Thank you, Sam. So to begin, we will provide an overview as um, Samantha indicated of Columbia fall updates and also um, recent government guidance. Um, as you may recall, last month, um, Colombia announced its hybrid instruction plan for fall. And just recently, last week, 
President Bollinger announced all undergraduate programs will be 100% online. So it is our purpose today to be able to answer as many questions as you may have related to these latest update. For the SCVP guidance and clarification for the fall, um, we have a recent guidance um, as of July 24th that clarified that newly admitted students are eligible to apply for a student visa and arrive in the US in F1 status to attend a program that is not 100% online. All undergraduate programs at Columbia will be um, able to take classes online. So new students are not eligible to apply for F1 or J1 visa to arrive to the US this fall. The current um, SVP guidance also indicated that continuing students from spring 2020 may enroll full-time while studying online in the US or abroad. As we mentioned earlier that for continued student, there's really very, uh, there's no change at all. So um, if you are a continued student on this webinar, you can go to our uh, ISSO website. We have posted the previous uh, webinars there. Uh, please look at that. And also the FAQ on our website, uh, if you have any questions regarding your status or uh, hybrid courses or CPT, all the information has been posted there. So we're gonna spend the rest of our time talking about incoming students. Thank you, Sam. We will address travel and visa questions. Um, thank you everyone for sending us emails. Um, we have prepared these questions based on the, on the most popular questions that we have re received from you that we think are very um, um, important. So um, I just received my F1, J1 uh, student visa. Can I still use this visa for online classes this fall? F1, J1 students may not arrive in the US for classes that are or courses that will be 100% online. If I already received my F1, J1 visa, can I still use it to enter the US in a, late, in a later term? And the answer is yes, you can continue to use your unexpired F1, J1 visa to enter the US in a later term. However, you will need an amended I-20 from our office with um, a start date in the future. It could be um, spring term. We did send out an email to all of you. So please refer to that email and um, respond to us and let us know uh, what your plans are. I recently arrived in the US and reported my arrival to the US. Can I remain in the US to study this fall? The answer is yes. You can remain in the US and enroll full time to maintain F1, J1 student status since the undergraduate program to online changed after you arrived. However, you will need to make your own housing arrangements. I scheduled my visa appointment. Can I still apply for my visa with, um, for fall with my DS 2019 or I-20? The answer is no. Um, you may apply for your student visa up to 120 days in advance um, from your term of arrival. And so you will need to uh, receive a new I-20 from us with an updated start date. So please uh, contact us and um, we'll make the change for you. In terms of visa processing, um, as you may know, on July 14th, the Department of State announced the phased resumption of routine visa services. Um, it is possible that many of you have encountered problems uh, scheduling visa appointments, and it is possible that at this point, 
you may not have one. And um, these cases and, and how the, the embassies and consulates will open depend on local conditions. So we do recommend that you refer to the US embassies website um, for the latest update on their local reopening plans. In terms of transfer students, we are receiving questions related to transfer students. Um, and so the first question for transfer students, I am an F1 transfer student outside the US and received my I-20. Can I enter the US for a study this fall? The answer is yes, you may arrive to the US to pursue full-time online study since this is allowed. However, you will need to make your own housing arrangements as well. Next question, I am an F1 transfer student already inside the US. Um, should I remain in the US to study for fall? The answer is you can remain in the US and enroll full time to maintain your status. And again, um, you will need to make your own housing arrangements. All right. So there's a lot of questions. Uh, some of the questions you have raised in the chat, we will get to some of them shortly. In terms of enrollment, of course, you can enroll at home. You do not need a visa to actually enter the U.S. to enroll online. So if you choose to enroll this fall, you are certainly can be 100% online at home. A visa is really just for you to enter the U.S. at this point. And for those who are Canadian students, you do not need a visa to enter the country. However, the same rules will apply that uh, uh, because we are going 100% online, if you have not entered the U.S. at this point, you will need to remain home to study. Uh, it's not likely that you will be able to cross over with just the I-20 for fall term. Okay, so next. So questions about CPT, OPT. So for many of you, you have uh, internship opportunities. So once you complete your first year, because of the change of going online fully, you will need to maintain two full terms of studies in the US before you'll be eligible for CPT or OPT. This means that uh, for those students who are looking to engage in internship for CPT, uh, once you arrive in spring term, spring and then complete the full-time spring term and complete full-time summer, then you'll be eligible for CPT in the fall term or after. Um, okay, next. Okay, believe it or not, we are getting to the end of our slides. And so we want to leave you with this particular slide. Um, you can find the ISSO COVID-19 hub on our homepage. Um, there you will find our FAQs, both for current and incoming students. You will find our latest updates, uh, any changes on resources related to visas, travel, and you also find some new features where you can uh, check out the latest updates by date. And so we ask you to refer to this uh, hub uh, regularly so that you can keep up with any changes that may be coming down the pike. Hopefully, no more changes. I think we've had enough change. Um, and so with this, uh, we are going to move on to our Q&A. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, so we receive a lot of questions in the um, chat, so we're gonna try to answer as many as we can. We do have quite a bit of time, so we'll address all your concerns till we come to a end uh, our, when our hour is up. So uh, one of the first questions that was asked about is about the uh, Global Center. So there are a number of Global Centers around the world where students may be able to engage uh, and network at the center. The setups are different for each of the countries. So on the website, the Global Center website, it actually details where 
the centers are located and what kind of pop-up centers are being set up. Currently, that is underway. So for some of you who read President Bollinger's email regarding um, your ability to be at a global center taking courses, this varies depends on location and the setup. So I would encourage you to check the website. It is being updated constantly. So if there are location where you can go to the center for in-class, uh, in-person class, or if it's a networking location, it will be um, detailed on their website. So I would encourage you to look at that. Okay. Um, so our next question that we got um, is, if students who are from Canada, um, who have been given permission to uh, reside in Columbia for the year, can they still arrive? Um, and so while uh, citizens from Canada do not require the F-1 visa in their passport to come, um, since you still do require the I-20, if your I-20 is an initial attendance I-20, which you can see right on the front page, um, you would not be able to arrive for online only study. Um, we know that housing contracts, I think, are being updated, so you want to reach out with the housing office if you have more questions about that. Um, but yeah, anyone, even uh, Canadian citizens, if you have an initial attendance I-20, um, those students are not able to arrive. Um, our next question, um, which we did briefly cover, but I'll repeat it in case anyone missed it. Um, I'm a new international student and I've attained an F-1 visa. I'd like to ask, um, can I enter the U.S. for next semester? And the answer is, as long as your F-1 visa is unexpired, you can continue to use it um, to enter the U.S. for a later term. But you will just need an updated I-20 from our office for your new term of arrival. Um, so as Maria mentioned, you should have received an email from us with instructions on how to request an amended I-20. Um, but uh, we will also be sending reminder emails um, throughout the semester. So if you're still making decisions, um, you have time to submit that to us. Um, but you can follow the steps there to get an amended I-20. Right, let me jump in here and talk about health insurance. So uh, there were questions regarding health insurance. So if you have already arrived in the U.S., and even though you won't be taking online courses, as long as you are registered and you're in the U.S., health insurance is required. If you are taking courses online and you are not in the U.S., your insurance um, could be waived. To consider a waiver, you can contact the Columbia Health. They have a website and information about how to waive out the insurance if you're not in the U.S. this fall. Okay, let's see. Um, just reading through the questions here. Go ahead and clear. Okay, I can jump in on a couple. Um, this one, I'll just, uh, since it kind of clarifies the question I just answered too, um, if, it's, if you apply for the I-20 and the F-1 visa to enter for January 2021, um, but that semester is made to be 100% online too, um, you know, we can't predict that now, but in case of it, um, will I be able to enter the U.S. with the same F-1 visa and I-20 in fall 2021? Um, so it's the same uh, principle that applies there, that as long as the F-1 visa is unexpired, you could still use it to um, arrive even for fall 2021, um, but you will need to get an updated I-20 um, from our office. So if we have issued for spring um, and it changes again, we will you know, be able to work with you and issue you another updated I-20 to make sure you have the right documents when you're preparing to come. Um, we also see there's a few questions here um, from the dual degree students, um, since they've you know, been participating in Columbia studies for the past two years outside the US um, at an affiliate university um, and whether they can come. Um, so unfortunately, uh, if you've never been in the US before and you have been issued that initial attendance I-20, um, you would not be able to arrive for the online classes this fall. Um, so you would want to work with your school to see um, your enrollment options for the fall um, and uh, you know, make some plans to arrive for the spring term. All right, there's a question about stipend and uh, TA. So there are two different issues. Um, these 
for a stipend, if you are receiving a stipend, then uh, it should not be an issue. Um, your school will contact you in terms of setting up a, a stipend payment. Uh, the question about being a TARA, if you are looking to be a TARA, uh, your department again will be in touch in terms of how that's going to be worked out. Uh, as many of you know, that uh, if you're a new student, you have not came to uh, arrive in the U.S. and you have not begun your F1 status, then you will not be eligible for on-campus employment until that happens. So at this point, um, for students who are outside the U.S. who are newly admitted student, that's still under discussion in terms of whether one can be a TA uh, or RA. So departments will be doing a follow-up shortly uh, in terms of employment on campus. Those who have been um, transfer students, if you're a transfer student and this is a continual appointment or this is a uh, new appointment, that we are still waiting for um, the university to give clarification on that. So again, for any type of TARA positions, I would encourage you to follow up with your department on that topic. All right, Jan, you want to take the L, uh, leave and deferral question? Sorry, hold on a second. Um, what number is that? I scrolled down to the other questions. Uh, where is that? Bear with me a second. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for the person. number for the... 13, I think. 15? Uh, 16. Okay, I'm way down on 20 something. My apologies. Okay, so if I want to take a gap semester, will I need to update my visa or I-20 as well? Um, so I am presuming you are a continuing student. And if that is the case, uh, one of the things that will happen once your leave of absence is approved is that we are required to terminate your F1 status. And so the answer to the question is yes, you will need to obtain a new I-20 if you do take a leave of absence. The new I-20 will reflect the new start date when you do decide to return, whether it is in one semester or in one year. As far as the visa, um, you will be able to use the same visa as long as that visa is unexpired. If your F-1 visa expires while you are on leave, then you will need to apply for a new F-1 entry visa and you will do that by obtaining a new I-20 form. And um, we will provide you with all, these, uh, all this information and all the details once your leave is approved. So be sure to have this conversation with your academic advisor before you make uh, your final decisions about uh, whether or not to take the leave. Okay, um, so we have another question. Um, I'll just go over that's related to um, Canadian citizens, um, since they don't require the uh, F1 student visa in their passport, um, but, and they already have an I-20, um, but as I mentioned, uh, even if you have the I-20, if it is an initial attendance I-20, you will still not be able to arrive for classes this fall since they're 100% online. Um, the F-1 guidelines apply to all students the same. Um, the only difference with Canadian citizens is you don't have to make the extra stop at the consulate to get the passport, uh, get the visa in your passport before arriving, but otherwise all the rules um, are applied in the same way. So um, unfortunately, um, you would not be able to arrive for study this fall if you do have an initial attendance I-20. Um, and then I know we had some questions from a transfer student. Um, if you're a transfer student outside the US, um, can I study online abroad this fall and enter the US when we have offline classes with a new I-20? Um, so the answer to that is yes, you can participate in your classes outside um, the U.S. online. Um, if that's going to be your plan, if you haven't reported those uh, plans to us yet, um, please follow the directions in the email that we sent you. 
Um, what we'll try to do is we'll try to update the start date on your I-20 to a later term. Um, for transfer students, we do need to submit a request um, to the government to be able to update the start date. Um, so it would be dependent on their ability to approve that. If we're able to get you an updated start date I-20 with the same CVIS ID, we will. Um, but if not, you may need to have an I-20 with a new CVIS ID. Um, either way, you would report the changes to us. Um, but, you know, if you are um, looking to study, you know, from your home country this semester, um, you know, that's definitely an option for you. Um, and then there's another question from a transfer student that is a transfer student who's coming to the U.S. shortly um, and received the on-campus housing. Um, I'm able to stay in housing you've been awarded. Um, with that, we know that there were updates to the housing contracts, so we would recommend contacting the housing office directly. Um, it does appear that students who um, are able to arrive or have already arrived will need to make their own housing arrangements for the fall, um, but the best place to confirm that information would be with the housing office. All right, let me jump in here for a couple mm -hmm. more. I think there are a number of students asking about uh, uh, perhaps Perhaps the situation may change if you're thinking about coming in the spring. So right now, hopefully that uh, since will be better for spring term and we will welcome everyone to return to campus in spring. However, once you do come in spring, if situation changes, we have to go online or we need to depart the US, you certainly can't do that by continuing to enroll online uh, from home. Um, however, if you're thinking about taking a leave of absence, that is a different procedure. So if you want to take a time off from registering, that will be considered a leave of absence once you begin this fall. Um, so we will be monitoring the situation. Again, currently we're talking about fall semester. The guidance both from the university and SCVP are related to this fall. Uh, once we get closer to spring, maybe uh, later on the semester, uh, we will be monitoring both the health situation in the United States and also um, on campus. Additional information will be provided. Um, we're hoping that this emergency will end. Uh, however, depends on how things may change this winter. Uh, we might need to go online in the spring as well. So uh, again, additional information will be um, going to be posted and to be updated um, as we get more information from SAVP as well. Uh, there's a number of questions about um, um, being a transfer student. So we will also update our website under the new student, incoming student. Uh, there is a FAQ uh, already existing and for transfer students, some of the questions you're asking about whether you can come or you can enroll, it's currently posted there as well in case we don't get to your questions. Um, okay, so that said, let's see how many credits. So there's a question about CPT and OPT. How many credits do we need to take during the summer term so they can come the full time to do CPT or OPT in the fall? So this is a very unique year. The university have determined that fall, spring, and summer are three terms. So in the past, summer is considered mostly vacation term for most students. However, because the summer is going to be a, officially a term, that means you will need to enroll for minimum of 12 credits or, or one RU extended resident unit for the summer to be considered full time. Summer in the past is whatever courses you would like to take or you can go on vacation. However, if you're interested in becoming eligible for CPT in the following fall by enrolling spring 12 credits and summer 12 credits, you become eligible fall 21. Um, otherwise, you, if you choose not to take summer courses, you certainly can. You don't need to enroll. Um, you can take that as a term off as well then you will need to complete spring 21, fall 21, you become eligible spring 22 for CPT or OPT. Okay, all right, let's see, what other questions? Sam, um, I'd like to take question 18 because there may be a, a few students in this situation. So some of you 
may be um, returning from a leave of absence. And um, in, in terms of how this new guideline applies to you, unfortunately, um, you are considered uh, to be like an initially admitted student, a new student, even though you are not new to the university, um, for visa purposes, you have been issued an initial attendance I-20, and therefore you are treated as if you were new uh, coming in for the first time. And so if you have already applied for a visa and were and received it, were approved, the current guidelines still apply to you since um, Columbia is doing all virtual learning for undergrads. Um, you are not permitted to enter the U.S. until um, you are able to come in, <clears throat> until things change, basically. And so as long as classes remain 100% online, you are not able to enter the U.S. Um, I know we received a few of these questions, um, so I'll go back to another one related to dual degrees, because um, it is similar to return from leaves where you're not um, a new student to Columbia and that you've been enrolled in a program affiliated with Columbia Abroad. Um, but a similar way, since you've been issued um, an I-20 with an initial attendance and you've not been in the U.S. before, um, for visa purposes, you are treated as a new student. Um, and unfortunately would not be able to arrive this fall with that I-20 um, since study has gone completely online. Um, there's also a question about um, if you need to update your visa appointment since you're not coming for fall um, and whether um, you'd be required to pay a new CVIS fee for the amended I-20 you will be receiving for a later term. Um, so for that, we would recommend reaching out to the consulate to see um, if they're able to reschedule the appointment without charging additional fees, that would really be at their discretion. Um, but if you have been issued an initial attendance I-20 from our office, when we provide you that amended I-20, um, it will not, uh, the CVIS ID will not change. So you will not have to pay the CVIS fee again. Um, you will not pay a processing fee to our office again. Um, and the ones that we'll be issuing for spring 2021 um, will be sent electronically. Um, so you'll get that in your email and wouldn't need to pay for shipping. Um, and I saw another good question I will jump to and then let Sam come okay. back. Yeah, um, so there's a question about a um, student who may have B2 tourist visas, uh, whether a student can study online uh, by entering as a tourist. We strongly do not recommend you enter the U.S. as a tourist and you know online as well because you must be in the F1 status to be enrolled as a student. The B2 tourist visa is only for you to travel, come sightseeing, uh, to visit. So uh, it is a conflict. So uh, we would not recommend that you enter as a tourist. If you are able to enter, then you need to enter as an F1. Otherwise you'll be in violation of the uh, B2 tourist visa. So uh, that would not be advised. Um, another question about student, um, the is asking about reimbursement for those who have booked flights and uh, because of the announcement that now that uh, they're no longer able to fly. Um, unfortunately, that is outside of our office jurisdiction to uh, give you any recommendation on that. We hope that uh, you're able to perhaps defer your flight for a later date, perhaps spring uh, to come back. Uh, we do hope that uh, students are able to make arrangement. Like Claire mentioned that there's um, fees you have paid that you may be able to uh, defer. And there's other uh, things in terms of housing. Housing is uh, doing updates, um, insurance. Uh, you may be able to waive out of that. Um, and um, other fees that you have paid as a student. Uh, some fees are being viewed uh, by the university to see whether it will be reduced or not. So those are things that so we will have to defer to the appropriate office for. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to um, assist you in that. But we strongly recommend that 
do not come on the tourist visa because that's going to jeopardize your F1 status and also going to jeopardize your eligibility for your benefits such as CPT or OPT application. Okay, all right. Um, more questions about transfers. I think we might need to clarify some more. Um, yeah, I also see we have a question from a rising sophomore who has a F1 visa and an I-20 with a travel signature. I'm asking if they can return for fall. Um, so as we did mention a little earlier, um, if you're a continuing student, so you were enrolled um, at Columbia uh, for spring 2020 and you were already in active F1 status, um, you can arrive for the fall with your I-20 and valid visa. So continuing students um, are not as impacted by this change in the uh, um, switch to online study. Um, also, I see there's a question about if um, you can arrive in the middle of the semester um, for classes this fall if the conditions change with respect to the virus. Um, at this time, since the announcement has switched the entire uh, semester to online only study, um, if you do have that fall I-20 with initial attendance, um, we wouldn't be able to arrive later in the term um, just because the entire semester is an online only format. Um, if you're a transfer student who's looking to arrive a little late, I'd say maybe just reach out to us um, at our email address, um, which you can find on our website, newintilstudent at columbia.edu, um, and we can help you if you have a specific case. But in general, um, we would not be able to arrive in the middle of the term. Okay. Um, I'd like to, uh, oh, yes, please. If, you, if I may, I'd like to make a clarification related to what constitutes a transfer student. We received a question related to that. And so the question was, am I considered transferred if I have been enrolled at a U.S. institution for the last four years, but I'm new to Columbia? And so the answer depends on whether um, you have received a transfer um, I-20 or an initial I-20 notation. And so if you have been here studying on an F-1 student visa before um, for the last four years, and so you requested a transfer I-20 from our office, F-1 transfer, then you are considered transfer student. However, if, for example, you've been here studying the four years um, but you requested an initial I-20 from our office, then that would not constitute a transfer. And so you will need to follow the rules for initial students. Great. Um, so there's a question. Um, oh, just lost my question here. Oh, there's a question about uh, continuous students and uh, obtaining travel signatures. So for those who are continued students, our process right now is all 100% online as well since uh, ISSO is also working remotely. You can simply request a travel signature um, by contacting our office and we can mail you the I-20. Uh, so we can send you a travel signature I-20 um, by, by mailing. Another question related to that for a continued student is that if you already been issued the I-20 and you're still um, have the I-20 and the dates are valid, you do not need to obtain a new I-20 from the office. There were um, some concerns earlier on with the SCVP where all students needed to have a new I-20 um, with notation of hyper courses. That is no longer the case. So your current I-20 that's previously issued is still valid. So you do not need to request a new I-20 for that purpose. Uh, for any continued students who wish to travel, as long as your travel signature is still valid, you're good to go. If you need a new signature, please contact us. Uh, we will send you a new I-20. Uh, there is a question about a leave of absence. Um, and the question is, can I take a leave of absence until January? Uh, because basically taking classes online is just too difficult. Um, and that's a very good question. Um, so the first thing I want to make clear is that a leave of absence is only an option for students who are 
continuing students. In other words, you've already arrived, you started your program, um, you were in F, in F status uh, in the spring. And so that's different from newly admitted students who, if you were expecting to start this coming fall and you choose not to because of the difficulties of learning remotely, you would be doing a deferral. So I'm presuming that this question is coming from a continuing student. And um, the answer is, you should speak to your school, to your academic advisor about a leave of absence. Um, in general, if you request it, you are able to get an approval for the most part. And um, once that approval is made, we will be contacted and we will be terminating your F1 record. And when you are ready to resume your studies in the spring or a later term, then um, we will be providing you with a new I-20 so that you can re-enter in the spring or the following fall if, if that is what you choose. Okay, let's see. Uh, Claire or Maria, any other questions that uh, need to uh, clarify and then I'll do the last three. Um, sure, I did see a question um, from an F1 transfer student who is inside the US and whether they need to report um, their arrival to our office. Um, and the answer is yes, you do need to uh, fill out our report your arrival form um, so that we can activate your F1 record. Um, so there's information on our website and the email that went out previously. Um, it's okay if you're not um, in New York at the moment and you will be reporting a U.S. address elsewhere in the U.S., you can still fill out that form um, to our office so we can activate your record. Um, and I did also see a question about when we sent out the email um, with the steps to obtain an amended I-20. Um, so it was last week on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, but if you don't believe you got it for any reason, or if you hadn't been issued an I-20 at that point, you probably didn't get it. Um, you can reach out to us and we can let you know what the steps are. The email was sent to students who already received their I-20. Um, if you um, haven't received an I-20 yet, then you can go to look on our website to see how to request an I-20 for a later term. Um, we'll also be sending out reminder emails. Thanks, Claire. And I'd like to address the final question here. Um, and the question is, if we are enrolled in an in-person graduate class as an undergraduate who has been granted special permission by the professor, are we eligible to get our visa? And so the answer to that question um, is no. And this is because the program and all of the graduate programs has been announced to be online. So unfortunately, although you may have permission or students may have permission to take these courses in person, um, this will not be enough to apply for the visa. Great, thank you. Uh, I think you meant undergraduate program because the I-20 is issued for undergraduate program. So, um, so two more questions uh, that's asked. One is the, whether the webinar will be posted. Yes, we will post the webinar uh, for students. However, please keep in mind that the uh, situation are fluid and it's constantly changing. So if you have questions, you definitely uh, want to contact us. And if there's major changes at the university or SCVP, we will be uh, updating and hopefully, uh, hopefully not to changes, but if there are changes, we will be hosting webinars like this as well. There is a question from a visiting student asking whether a visiting student is a new student or transfer student. Uh, as a visiting student, your academic program might be transferring, but as a immigration purpose, you are a new student for that matter. So unfortunately, if you're doing a one term or one year visiting, you will be considered a new student for the purpose. And unfortunately, this fall, you will not be able to come to participate. Uh, you might be able to uh, participate online only. Um, so those are pretty much all the questions that we received. Um, if there's anything that's unclear, please uh, follow up with us. Uh, you can look at the FAQ. You can look at 
the webinar again, or uh, please email us so that we can address your question um, by our advisors. Um, I think that's all the questions we have been, it has been submitted to us. So we would like to thank everyone, especially C's for helping us with our webinar setup and our advisors who are currently on this call um, providing answers. And uh, we hope you have a safe fall term and we look forward to seeing you on campus, hopefully spring term. Uh, at this time, we will end our uh, webinar uh, unless there's any other questions. Um, so I'm gonna give one minute to see if there are any last minute questions. If not, we will end the webinar. And thank you everyone for attending.